nice to be here in Orlando. I was here a lot doing research for my book on killer whales, so uh, SeaWorld's just down the street. And I'll talk about that a little bit later because um, animal welfare is a very important uh, subject to me. My book, folk, the, my factory farm book, focused uh, much more on the environmental problems that this type of agriculture causes and the effect it has on human health. I didn't go into animal welfare as much as I may have liked to. It's a, such a vast subject. But I think animal welfare is a very important key part of this whole story. Um, I first got interested in this subject way back in, I guess it must have been 2007, 2008. My first book, as Stephen mentioned, was called Evidence of Harm. And that dealt with the issue of mercury and vaccines as a preservative and the possible connection to autism. I know there's been some vaccine discussions here at the conference. I understand they've been a little heated and it's a controversial subject. Um, but while working on that book, I got to know Bobby Kennedy Jr. quite well because he's um, involved in that issue as well. And we became friendly and Bobby called me one day after I finished my first book and we were talking and just sort of out of the blue, he mentioned something that was going on in Arkansas in a little town called Prairie Grove. And he said that people, particularly children, were dying of cancer at rates that were just way off the charts. This was a little town of about a couple thousand people and they had 21 cases of pediatric cancer at the time. And I asked him what was going on and he explained to me that it was arsenic. And I said, arsenic? He said, yeah, they put arsenic in chicken feed on large industrial scale poultry farms. And I know that arsenic is a poison and I couldn't figure out why you would give poison to something that you would then go and eat. And it really started ringing alarm bells in my mind and I was very curious about it. So I started looking into it. And I had heard the term factory farm before, but I didn't really know what it meant. Um, but before I get into what factory farms are and how they hurt us, I just wanna talk a little bit about Prairie Grove. Because I went there, I spent a couple of days there and uh, there were a lot of depressing <laughs> moments, to be honest, um, researching this book, but this was one of the most deeply um, heartbreaking experiences I had. Tyson Chicken and other large poultry companies would routinely put arsenic in the feed for their chickens. Now, why do they do that? A, it makes them thirsty, so they drink more, and B, it, they eat more uh, to try to counteract the effect of the arsenic in their system, which makes them grow faster. It also prevents certain um, intestinal diseases that chickens get. Well, as you probably know, when you grow thousands and thousands of animals in a single place, you create enormous amounts of animal waste, more than any land could possibly absorb. Um, and what they were doing in Arkansas, as you know, chicken waste is in the litter. So when they grow chickens in these giant barns, it's lined with straw and other substances. And then the waste just goes, the litter goes right into into that bedding, um, and then they have to get rid of it. They have to do something with it. Well, it is a fertilizer, as we all know. There's nitrogen and other uh, nutrients in that waste. And what they were doing was dry spreading it on fields around town. And the high school had three fields around it. Um, and they would go out and just dry spread this stuff, just basically blow it onto the ground. And the arsenic in that litter was getting into homes, schools, places of work, and an attorney who was representing a lot of families uh, took me for a walk in just one neighborhood. And we just walked down the street and he said, leukemia, lymphoma, brain cancer. They had three cases of testicular cancer among 13-year-old boys. Now, boys typically don't get testicular cancer. These three boys happen to have the rarest form of testicular cancer, and they had three cases in one town. So that is one of the most direct impacts that I saw on raising thousands of animals in one concentrated place and a direct impact on human health. And unfortunately for these people, they've been trying for years to bring litigation against the poultry companies, and it's Arkansas. And the judges are elected, and they get huge amounts of campaign contributions from these giant companies. And so far, they have not prevailed, as far as I know, in any of these cases. Um, and that really got me looking into this 
issue more than anything. Um, factory farms, as you may know, are also known as CAFOs, which means concentrated animal feeding operation. And if you break that down, an operation is any business. I have no problem with an operation. A farm, a factory, a school, it's an operation. Animal feeding, well, that's part of agriculture, right? If you're going to raise animals, you have to feed them. So the AFO in that term is really not problematic. It's the C where things really become dangerous and become hazardous to human health and the environment. It's the concentration. It's the sheer number of raising so many animals in one place and that you generate so much waste, much more waste, as I mentioned, that the land can possibly absorb. Whereas on a traditional farm, the animals graze on pasture, they, they urinate and defecate in that pasture, which then directly fertilizes that ground, which then allows for the next generation to eat the forage that grows from that fertilization process. With a concentrated animal factory or feeding operation, uh, you, you don't have that dynamic. And so one of the biggest problems with these factory farms, again, is the waste. What do you do with it? Where do you put it? And how do you get rid of it? And so as I started doing my research and trying to figure out how to write this book, I write all my books through the point of view of people to whom these situations have happened. So my books kind of read like novels. <clears throat> and I had plenty of people to choose from who were dealing with the effects of factory farming in their own communities. I settled on three main characters, and I just want to briefly walk you through their stories because I think they're very illustrative and then I'll go into some of the more details about what factory farming is doing to the environment. Um, the first person I selected, his name is Rick Dove, very interesting man. Um, he was a JAG in the Marines, a, a, a judicial officer. Um, he lived in North Carolina. He bought some property on the Noose River, which is a beautiful estuary uh, near New Bern, which is a great little town built his dream house, raised his family. Uh, when he retired from the Marines, he started a fishing operation with his sons, and they would go out on their boat and, and sell the fish that they caught. And then one day, the fish started turning up dead. At first, thousands and then hundreds of thousands of fish dead along the shoreline, and they had lesions on them. And nobody could figure out what was going on. At the same time, people out on the water were starting to become disoriented. They would lose their way. They would not know how to get back home. Um, they almost went through this type of temporary insanity. And again, nobody knew what was going on. Finally, some biologists at uh, the University of North Carolina figured out that it was a parasite, uh, a flagellum called Fisteria. And this had attacked the fish and killed them. It also releases toxins into the air which made the people out on the water uh, get so disoriented. Uh, Rick had to close down his fishing operation. He couldn't sell the fish, they were too diseased. And he set out to find out what was going on. And one day he went up in an airplane. And when I went down to North Carolina, he took me up in an airplane. And as you know, North Carolina is one of the largest pork producing states in the country. And in typical uh, hog farms, factory farms, these animals are kept in these tiny barn or barns, uh, crammed in there. The larger they get, the less space they have to the point where they can barely turn around when they're full grown. And they live on these concrete slats. And when they go to the bathroom, their waste falls into pits beneath the concrete slats. And then they take water and they flush out the pits and they store all that waste in these giant lagoons. Some of them are 12, 13, 14 acres millions and millions of gallons of sewage. Uh, and it sits there for a long time. And Rick took me up in the plane and we flew over the, the lowlands of North Carolina. And after a few minutes, there they were, one after another, after another, after another. I just flew down today from New York and we flew over North Carolina and sure enough, I saw the same thing. You've probably seen these um, establishments from the airplane. They look like, almost like rows of cigarettes. And those are long barns where the animals are kept. And then there's usually lagoons. And we saw these lagoons. Some of them were bright magenta, pink in color, um, just indescribable. And they were absolutely everywhere. And then he showed me the fields 
where the farmers take this wastewater from the lagoons and they spray their fields with it. Um, now in North Carolina, the nutrients are so dense, they're so concentrated, that when you start putting this stuff, applying it to the land, then you need to grow something to absorb it all. And they typically grow hay. But that hay is so full of nitrates and concentrated nutrients, you can't even feed it to animals. So what they're basically doing is disposing of this waste into the soil, planting crops to bring it out of the soil, and then that, that hay typically just rots in the field, and it goes back into the ground anyway. But what I saw was these farmers spraying their fields and saturating them, oversaturating. They have to get rid of this wastewater. They have nothing else to do with it. And they spray with these giant semicircular sprayers. And we saw them spraying and spraying and spraying. Some of them, when they saw us circling overhead, they turned off their sprayers. So they knew that we were watching them. But what you would see was this wastewater just gathering on top of the surface. And of course, North Carolina has lots of creeks and rivers and streams. And you could see how this wastewater was just running off into the streams. And the streams had just, and I saw it again today on the plane, filled with nutrients to the point where these algae blooms were growing, filled with, they were, they were purple and yellow and green, the, the, the ghastliest colors you'd ever want to see in water. And Rick finally put it all together and realized that North Carolina, which was so friendly to factory farming and these giant companies that run um, hog farms, chicken farms, uh, and dairy farms, uh, were getting away with, with, with murder. They were, they were killing hundreds of thousands of fish. And of course, there were several hurricanes <clears throat> and big rain events. And when they came in, they would just wipe out the lagoons, just wash them out. <clears throat> and they would actually wash out the pigs as well. So the pigs were seen bobbing in the water. Um, some of them actually swept out to sea where they were eaten by sharks. And uh, Rick, working with Waterkeeper Alliance and Bobby Kennedy, managed to sue some of these big growers, mostly Smithfield uh, in, in North Carolina. And, and he had some victories there. But Rick, again, is just an interesting character. He um, came from a very conservative Republican background and after um, and in the Marines. Uh, and, and after this, he, he actually switched over uh, and, and went to the Democratic Party. Not that the Democrats are that much better than the Republicans on this issue. Uh, don't get me wrong. But uh, he had a real transformation. And as a matter of fact, everybody in my book sort of had that same transformation. You never think about these things until they happen to you, uh, until your community is suddenly surrounded by industrial animal agriculture and all of this waste that must be disposed of.